Hi everyone and welcome to another exciting episode of Explore Qatar. Today, I and Amira are on a mission to explore the Sheikh Faisal bin Qasim Al Thani Museum. Founded by His Excellency Sheikh Faisal bin Qasim Al Thani, this museum has over 30,000 artifacts from different ages and multitude of cultures that are handpicked and collected by Sheikh Faisal himself. This building is like the modern version of the Cabinet of Curiosities. So in this first part of the museum's series, we're going to start by exploring the jewelry and textile, weaponry, and the Islamic art sections. Let's go? Let's go. Let's go. This particular hall witnesses the legends and stories of Bedouin folklore. Back in those days, apart from adornment, jewelry was used for financial security and for ritual purposes. Another interesting thing that I came across was the talismans. They were talismans made of silver and gold that had carnelian stones that would ward off evil spirits and help achieve someone's dream. Fascinating, isn't it? Apart from these, we can also see some of the finest examples of luxury afforded by few back in those days. Here is a gold embroidered coat that belonged to a young Ottoman royal or even shoes made of ivory and mother of pearl, worn by both men and women. Oh, by the way, the museum has their own app, both for iOS and Android, for you to enjoy a smooth and easy experience. It can help you navigate, or you can even read up descriptions for the artifacts that you're interested in. Definitely comes in handy for me. In the Islamic era, the pottery industry saw a huge development, whether it be in the techniques or creating new aesthetic forms. So at that time, pots, vessels, and bowls, they were used to support the visual and the written storytelling. It's really interesting compared to our current ways of storytelling. The museum gathers diverse examples from each school, highlighting their characteristics and traits. For instance, Ottoman ethnic pottery features neutralistic floral decorations typical of the Arab Muslim aesthetic, while Hispano Moresque vases show golden luster combining various Islamic and Christian elements. Domestic furniture, such as large mirrors, tables, and chairs, substantiate the most typical pattern used in Islamic art, the arabesque. This technique involves inlaying woodwork with other materials, such as ivory, bones, and shells. Although inlaying wood is a form of pre-Islamic art, this technique flourished during the Islamic era in Damascus and Cairo to compensate for timber scarcity. Predominant in the room is the section dedicated to Hajj, which is the annual pilgrimage to Mecca and Islam's fifth pillar. As you can see here is the Kiswa, which is the cloth employed to cover and protect the Holy Kaaba. Guns, daggers, and swords have long been present in royal and ceremonial halls besides their military purposes in bloody battles. On display here are various types of swords and armaments used around the world. They are in distinct shapes and sizes depending on the timeline they belong to. For example, curved swords were preferred in the Middle East. However, in Europe, the straight blade would prevail. Apart from swords, the museum's artillery collection also tracks the history of gun locks across centuries. The museum is huge with so much to discover. That's all for part one of Sheikh Faisal Museum. Stay tuned for more. Bye-bye.